Hello and welcome to Washington Exec's video series. I'm Amanda Zieta with Washington Exec and with me today is Stephen Kovac. He's the Chief Compliance Officer at Zscaler. Thanks so much for joining me today, Stephen. Uh, it's a pleasure, Amanda. Good to be here and uh, look forward to having our discussion. All right, me too. So I understand Zscaler has some news to share regarding recent achievements with the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program, otherwise known as FedRAMP. Can you share a bit about those? Sure. Recently, um, Zscaler has just announced that we had two more of our platforms that have begun in process with the FedRAMP office, um, with the PMO. Uh, first of all, we're, we've been in process for a short period of time now for our Zscaler Internet Access Platform, which is a JAB authorization at the high baseline. And we just announced that we also brought our Zscaler private application um, up as an agency moderate. And why this is important to us right now is because currently we have the reverse. Currently, we have our private access at the high baseline and our internet access product at the moderate baseline. So what this will allow us to do is to have the entire Zscaler platform, you know, which we call the Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange. And it's very important to us because when you offer the whole suite of Zscaler products across the Zero Trust Exchange, customers want to buy it either at the high baseline or the moderate baseline and want to have the whole suite. And they either want it either a jab or they want an agency. So now the customers can really have anything they want from Zscaler. They'll be able to have Zscaler high jab, high solution for the internet, for the um, Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange or the moderate solution for the Zero Trust Exchange. So it's very exciting for us. We look forward to completing those authorizations. Awesome, yeah. So what do these accomplishments mean for Zscaler and its federal clients going forward? Well, I mean, I think thinking through that, Zscaler has been a leader um, in, in, in cloud security for several years. Um, I mean, since probably the last 10 years, we've been the leader. We've 10, 10 years in a row been the leader in the, in the magic quadrant. Um, and FedRAMP has been a big part of that. You know, I started the program back in 2016 mm -hmm. and we began to build out the FedRAMP platform for our federal customer base. Um, we are a born and bred in the cloud company. So we are, there's no appliances. We have no devices. We are truly a cloud solution. So in federal, there's only one way to do that, and you must start with FedRAMP certification. So that's why it's so important to us. And I'm a true believer in the um, you know, certify once, use many philosophy of the FedRAMP office. Um, I've done been through FedRAMP many times in my career. I've never had the experience. I've had at Zscaler, it's such a great experience to take such an amazing platform to FedRAMP so many times. Um, but it's so important to our customers because when they look at, at Zscaler, as a cloud solution, right? They have to trust. And the only way you trust is to have a certification behind it. And certifications such as FedRAMP moderate, FedRAMP high are very, very important certifications to us. So our customers know that what we say, we do. And when we say we have FedRAMP, we mean it. But a lot of people will say, oh, we have FedRAMP coming. We don't do that. We just deliver it. And that's important to us. And our customers now know it and our customers trust us. And that's why they have so much faith in us and our ability to deliver on FedRAMP. Why are certifications so important to Zscaler and its customers? Well, I think certifications are important at, you know, at every level, you know, whether it's uh, your ISO, your SOC, your CSA, um, your FedRAMP, right? Uh, obviously inside of FedRAMP, you've got FIPS and then there's CGIS and then there's ITAR. And then there's, as you go up the stack, it's IL-4, IL-5, IL-6, you know, it's coming. Um, in the cloud world, especially the world that we live in, it's, it's, it is the only, it's the, you know, I, you hear me say this all the time, you know, in, in public speaking stuff, when I call it, it's the good housekeeping seal of approval. Um, you know, it's, you know, everybody can say they do this, but certifications prove you do it and they prove to what level you do it, right? Um, Lee Scaler is, is the leader in our class in, in, in compliance. Um, and, and, and we're, in my opinion, we're far above the rest because we have focused on building a platform that really follows whether it's the NIST, you know, the, whether we're following NIST or whether we're following CSA, um, ISO, you know, or even internationally. I mean, you know, we look at, you know, across the globe when we look at our platform and customers have to believe in something and being able to say, here's our platform. We do X, Y, and Z. And by the way, here's the certifications to back that up. And I think that's what helps tell the Zscaler story of a cloud platform. And you can download those certifications on our website. We don't, we don't keep them from our customers. You go straight to our compliance website, go to whatever certification you want to see. Obviously not FedRAMP because you can't give that one away, but all the other certifications are there. So for us, they're, that, they're the, you know, the badge of honor that says we do it the right way. And, and also, it's as I said, it's just that seal of approval that 
a buyer can say, hey, I looked at Zscale or I looked at their certifications. They were able to meet all the things that we're looking for. They've proven it. And I have the document to, to, to make sure that I don't get fired for buying Zscale or, um, and, you know, versus you know, some of the other players that don't have that stuff. And it's, so take my word. And it's awful hard in today's environment with the, with the hacks and, and, the, and everything else that we have going on to take someone's word when you're talking about cloud security. Yeah, that's a good point. And when it comes to federal clients, how does Zscaler work with them to make cloud security adoption easier and more efficient? Well, I, I think that that's just really the true Zscaler story. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look back, you know, years ago, and, and I, you know, I, I, I always so enamored when Jay Chaudhry, our founder, speaks of how, you know, he discovered the concept or came up with the concept of Zscaler. And it's really kind of the answer to this question. Mm-hmm. You know, back 10 years ago, you know, people started leaving the network, the perimeter. Let's call it the perimeter. We like to call it the network today. So people call it perimeter. Some people leave the net. So you had people also coming from Starbucks or a hotel room or working from home and were VP, VPNing into a network. So they go back and take a network into the perimeter. Mm-hmm. So they were taking everything bad they have and putting it in the perimeter. And then the apps were leaving, right? The apps started going, you know, the creation of AWS and, the, you know, we had Google and, and I can go down the list of Salesforce mm-hmm. and service now, all my buddies in the industry um, that we work so well with. And people were now getting their data from, from the cloud. The problem was, is they were still getting the security from the, the network and the perimeter. So if you, if you kind of draw this in your mind and you think of, here I am sitting at home, I'm going to VPN with my computer that has been all over wherever. Mm-hmm. I'm going to VPN into my data center, cross my network into my data center. What I bring with me, I, God only knows. I'm going to put that in. And then all of a sudden I'm going to turn around and send that out to say a, a, a SaaS provider where I'm getting my data. Mm-hmm. As you can see, that creates a hairpin. In the federal space, it's much worse because then we have the the you know, the, the trusted internet connection, or you might or some people might know it as MTIPS, which kind of doubled this problem because now did you you went back to the went back to the agency network and then you had to hop over to a trusted internet connection or an MTIPS connection to get your required CISA or DHS OMB requirement of security, and then you went out to a SAS connection. All these multiple hops made no sense. The idea is the shortest distance between two, between two points is a straight line. So if you could build that security stack in the cloud and on your way to wherever you were going, hit a cloud site, your first hop being in the cloud on the way and get all that security assurance, you can short, you can get rid of that hairpin. And when you get rid of that hairpin, you get rid of that the latency, your user performance goes up. And because it's in the cloud, you have the ability to update it quickly. Imagine if I have to, if I find out, if I'm running an appliance network across the globe and I find out I have a update I have to make, but you know, here comes patch Tuesday and I'm updating appliances all over the world and having to shut people down and looking for windows in a cloud environment. If I have a bad user going on in Milan, Italy, and all of a sudden it's a new bug we see, we immediately see that bug, catch it and update our entire global cloud within seconds. And we do that over about 250,000 times a day. Just to give you an idea, you know, across our, you know, multiple billions, you know, 20 plus billion transactions we do a day. Mm-hmm. Or I, I actually believe it's now somewhere I heard it's 100 billion transactions a day. Wow. Um, we're able to do that instantaneously. That's what helps them. That's what federal agencies help them migrate. They're not have to build it out. It's a simple one hop. It's a per user model. They, they don't have to worry about, you know, patching. It's all done for them. It's really mm-hmm. all managed for them. And it's just a better experience all around. Awesome. Well, great to hear because that's certainly the type of, efficiency that the federal government needs to modernize and, and kind of move yeah, for the sure. ball rolling on this. For sure. Yeah. For so sure. what are you willing to share about what's next for Zscaler's compliance program in the future? I love that question because you know, we're a public company, so it's always hard for me to tell too much. Um, and, and as a compliance officer, you know, I, I can share a little. So I, I would share some exciting things that we're doing today. And I think these are things that are public knowledge. Um, obviously, you know, we, we, we expect to have these two certifications. Um, we expect to have the, the Z, the, our, uh, our high jab certification here in the next week, two weeks. Um, we expect to probably have our, our moderate one that's in process by the end of uh, June, early July. Um, and then we'll have, as I said, the zero trust exchange across FedRAMP. But then really, you know, we have IL-5 on our private access, on our private access platform. Um, we are sponsored for IL-5 in our, in our internet access program. And we're also in the middle of that. So we we'll hope to finish that by end of summer. And that'll give us, of course, the zero trust exchange at the aisle five. And then um, I would say the logical answer is aisle six, look out, here we come. And, um, you know, we're obviously pretty heavy into that right now. That is a, it's an interesting way for an internet-based 
software company to look at a closed network. So we're doing that. We're figuring that out and uh, working with some great partners, and, uh, especially one great partner and helping us figure that out. Um, but I think some ex examples of other things we're doing is international. Um, you know, obviously, you know, as FedRAMP was the leader and U.S. was leader in certifications of the cloud, you know, there are other ones that have come out. We've recently completed IRAP in Australia, IRAP protected in Australia, I should say. Um, you know, we're about to complete um, ITGS, uh, ITSG 33 in Canada. Um, we just finished up C5 in Germany. Um, and, and the list goes on and on. We're in the middle of our, our SMAP in Japan. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to, uh, you know, that, that we're growing and, and taking on new markets. And we lead, we find it's very helpful when you're going into these markets to lead with certifications. Our global commercial certifications are great, but global governments have become just like U.S. governments, and they're not accepting those. They want their own. And that's what you're seeing with these countries we're going after. I think that'll be our future in, of my team right now is not only to continue to update our current corporate stuff, our global corporate stuff, but also to really focus on that global government stuff as we expand across the globe.